the first attempt I made at race ranking was modeled closely after the existing Ultra Sign Up Runner rank, which I'll explain here first since I get asked a lot of questions about it. And I anticipate many of you will jump right to this section, so I'll make sure to go slow here. And don't worry, I used to teach undergraduate statistics. But if you still have questions, leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to them. And I'm not going to discuss the merits of this system quite yet. My goal here is just to make sure we're all on the same page about what it means and how to calculate it. Now, I'm going to use my own profile as the example here since I only have two race results right now, which makes it easy. In the top right corner of the profile banner, note the two scores which range from 0 to 100%, rank and age rank. These are separate aggregate scores that summarize your racing history. For each race you finish, DNFs and DNSs do not count against you, you receive both a rank and an age rank score. Though I should note, age rank exists under the hood here, but isn't displayed directly on your results page. Rank is based on your time compared to the fastest time in your gender division. Men are ranked against men, women are ranked against women. And for timed events like a 24-hour race, rank is your distance compared to the longest distance completed in your gender division. Age rank is basically the same thing, but it's grouped by both your age division, 30 to 39 in my case, and your gender division. So my time is compared to other 30 to 39 year old men. And to understand how rank is calculated for individual races, let's click into my first race result chronologically, which is Badger Mountain Challenge 50K. And make a mental note that it says 79.50% here. This is my rank for that race. On the results page, note that it's pulling in the overall rank we saw in my profile banner for my row, the 84.77%. That's not my rank for this individual race, it's my overall average. And if we click into Tyler Cox's results, you'll see that for Badger Mountain Challenge, Tyler was given 100% because he was the first finisher in my division. And to get my 79.50% here, you would take Tyler's time, 421.51, and divide it by my time, 529.23, which yields 0 0.79497. Multiply that by 100, round it to two decimal places, and you get 79.5%. Look familiar? That's what we saw on the previous screen. And our database logs these times in milliseconds, which makes the math a little bit easier. I've included on screen here the formula to convert an hours, minutes, seconds timestamp to milliseconds for your own use. And continuing on here, we do the same thing for my tiger claw time, taking the time for the first place finisher in my division and dividing it by my time. The idea is that you're always taking the fastest time and dividing it by a slower time, which will be some percentage of 100, unless you're the first place finisher in your division, in which case you take your time, divide it by your time, which also yields 100%. So now that we have my individual race rank scores, if you add them by, together and divide by two to get an average like this, so 79.5 plus 90.04 divided by two, you get 84.77%. Everyone still with me? Taking this one step further, you can estimate how your rank will change given a new race result. For example, if I finish my next race, Gorge Waterfalls 100k with an 85% rank, which is ambitious, my overall rank would be like this, 79.50 plus 90.04 plus 85 divided by 3, or 84.85%. So if my rank is an 85, my overall rank will increase slightly. Now, hopefully this helps make our runner rank a bit more transparent. But if you're still unclear on anything, please feel free to reach out. We're always here for you.